We all have that same complaint when watching Netflix and YouTube and Hulu. Nothing looks real. In fact, this video, it's just in boring 1080p. Who cares if it's at a higher frame rate? It doesn't look more lifelike unless you can see every single pore on my face. You have to be able to see every minute detail for it to feel real. So recently I purchased the new 4K Apple TV and when I bought it I wasn't really expecting to get a 4K TV along with it but then I found a good deal on one. You guys know the story, I've got 4K content now. Finally I have Wi-Fi that can play back 4K, I'm paying extra now for the Netflix 4K subscription. That's kind of been my great way to get 4K content ready. Apple now has 4K HDR content on their iTunes store but I'm not really a guy who likes to buy a lot of movies. I'm not very specific with what kind of movies and TV shows I want to watch so typically if it's a Available on Netflix, I'll just watch that. And most of the Netflix originals on Netflix are in 4K. And I have to say, it does look better. There's definitely no denying that. And I think every tech YouTuber would agree. When you have four times the number of pixels, wow. You can just about see everything on every single person's face. Of course, when there's wide shots, you can see every little minute detail. What kind of tree that is, what kind of texture the wall is. Wow, 4K. And I don't really have anything to complain about. It is very nice. My issue is that age old question you hear on tech channels all the time, is this worth it? It's a very subjective question because it depends on how much money you have and how much you're willing to spend on a TV box, especially now with Amazon Fire boxes getting cheaper and cheaper. I think they have one now that's like $75 and it does 4K, but you're not getting access to TV OS, which Apple designed inside and out. We've got all of these really cool games. You can pair a Steel Series controller to your Apple TV and kind of use it as a very, very minimal console, but I've enjoyed doing it. It seems to be able to play a lot of the games on there in 4K. Thanks to the new chip, the A10X, which was originally designed for this year's iPad Pros, which is a very capable chip. Definitely allows it to support 4K playback. And hardware-wise, just about the only difference between the last generation Apple TV and this one is, first of all, they removed the USB-C port. But that was mostly for maintenance. So I guess most people didn't need it. And through some teardown videos, we see that the new 4K Apple TV actually has a cooling system. They have a tiny fan that is just pointed directly at the A10X chip, making sure it runs cool. Design-wise, it looks pretty much the same, but you've heard me talk about this before, and I'd like to bring it up again, is that so many stars have to align for 4K to be eligible. First of all, it's not enabled by default on Netflix. If you have the cheapest Netflix subscription package, you cannot watch anything in 4K. And even if you have the second highest Netflix subscription package, you can't watch things in 4K. You have to get the fully maxed out version, which still isn't that much, but it's extra money on top. The one that allows you to watch it four screens at once, and I've been reading articles that for the United Kingdom, 4K is actually going to cost a lot more for Netflix. And it's also true that 4K content takes up more space when you want to download it. They have a couple storage options for the 4K Apple TV, but I'm still looking at the current landscape of people watching televisions, understanding that most people already have a 1080p flat screen or they have a 1080p monitor. Whatever you're planning to hook your TV box up to, it's most likely 1080p. And for this 4K to be actually worth it, it makes the most sense that you would actually have a 4K monitor to output to. And I think a lot of people don't right now. Now. A lot of people may run into the convenient deals that I ran into, like at Walmart. I found a $400 4K television. And because I just bought this TV box and I want to see it useful and I want to experience content in true 4K, not just kind of A10X chip on a 1080p screen, I bought it. But a lot of people out there, a lot of you watching this video, are not tech reviewers. You're just consumers and you'd like to know, should I upgrade to the 4K one? Or am I good with the regular one? Or should I go elsewhere for a TV box? And I think it's safe to say 90% of what you need a TV box to do can really be done in the competition. TVOS is fun and it's neat to see all these new games coming to it. And the A10X chip is allowing for more and more games to be more optimized and more powerful on this particular model. But the current limitation is still the fact that when app developers are making games for this little console, you can even call it that, they're not allowed to say something is exclusive to the 4K Apple TV. So in that way, it is kind of limiting because if they're making an app, it has to also work on the extremely old A8 chip that they had on last year's Apple TV. Which simply means that even though the A10X chip is very powerful, there's not gonna be that many groundbreaking games on tvOS at the moment. Until Apple actually decides they wanna go like full in with the console market and actually make something with a dedicated graphics card and some actual storage and perhaps Apple could make their own gaming controller. Can you even imagine that? Like it wirelessly charges and it, that'd be cool and stuff. Maybe use Bluetooth 5.0, pair with the W1 chips. The possibilities are endless. But since they have not yet done that, I think that the Apple TV 
TV works really great if you currently already have the Apple ecosystem set up. AirPlay is very convenient and it's not really paralleled on the competition, but if you're looking for something that just plays Netflix, plays YouTube, the 4K Apple TV is a tad overkill when you consider the competition. Whether it be Chromecast or Fire TV, most of these things can play back just fine and paying $200 for a TV box is probably more than most people need. I really love playing games on my Apple TV, so that's fun, but if that's not something you're really into, it's totally justifiable to say, you know what, I like my iPhone and iPad or even my Apple Watch, but I think the Fire TV can get it done just fine, so I'm gonna stick with that. I wouldn't blame anyone who chooses to do that. I personally know a lot of friends that have not gone the Apple TV route just because they can find perfectly capable TV boxes that do something else. It's kind of a different product than everything else in Apple's landscape. You know, iPads can be used for productivity and gaming and entertainment, and so can our phones. But I think the Apple Watch is more about being physically in shape, as well as notification management. You know, all of these products are kind of productivity focused. Apple TV, there's nothing really productive about it. It's completely an entertainment device. So if I had to put the label toy on anything in Apple's lineup, that would be it, because the Apple TV doesn't help you write documents, make movies, or be a more in shape person. If anything, it makes you a couch potato. But I still use it every day, and just because of the AirPlay features as well as tvOS, I find it worth it. And one thing that a lot of people don't consider is that last year's Apple TV didn't really get a price reduction, which means that the starting price of the non-4K Apple TV is still $150 compared to this year's starting price of $180. So if you are choosing to go the Apple TV route, I may recommend the 4K one just because it's only $30. And if at any point down the road you decide you want to make that switch to 4K, which I don't necessarily feel like it's going to make a big difference. Yes, you can see every single pore, but do you really need to? I mean, a lot of older people I know that don't have as good as eyesight really can't see the difference between 1080p and 4K. And there's a lot of people out there I know that don't have the internet for it. Plus, YouTube is refusing to update their app on tvOS to support 4K playback. So if you watch a lot of YouTube on your Apple TV, this kind of defeats the purpose. Something that really frustrates me about Google. Oh wait, now they're gonna demonetize this video. Never mind. I love you, Google. Thank you so much for making perfect products. I love the pixel. I love it. But just for the A10X Fusion chip alone, Minecraft and other games will run better. Render distance can be turned up further. And games that have yet to come out will definitely run better on the 4K one. And it's an extra 30 bucks. So I'm gonna say reason to buy the Apple TV is for AirPlay and tvOS. For its potential and its intuitiveness and the apps and games it has as well as the game controller support. That's why you should buy that. When it comes to, I just need something to watch Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube on. I wouldn't blame you if you went the Fire TV or Roku route. Those are perfectly affordable and they're very cute. Let me know all your thoughts on the 4K Apple TV in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.